sunburned. Hello, beautiful makers. Welcome to episode 33 of Stitching the High Notes, a weekly video podcast about knitting, sewing, music, cross-stitching, and all things crafty. My name is Joanna, and you can find me on the social medias as Opera Joe, most notably on Instagram and Ravelry. There is a Ravelry group for this podcast, which you can find by searching on the groups tab, Stitching the High Notes. And in there, there are giveaways and knit-alongs and gathering places to chat about various craft projects and there are also show notes for every episode. You can also find the show notes at stitchingthehighnotes.com, which is a brand new website that I just recently launched. Very exciting. So do check it out. So hello, welcome. I hope you are all doing well. I hope your weeks have gone well and your projects are going well. I have lots to share with you all today. So without further ado, let's get started. As is tradition, we start each episode with tea time. I am drinking tea for the first time in a few weeks. <laughs> I recently got an espresso, so I've been drinking maybe way too many lattes from it. <laughs> and I've had a few or a couple um, this morning, but I wanted to switch to some tea and my old standby favorite, which is Earl Grey. And today I'm having some David's tea which I received from my fiber share partner, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. So I love this particular brand of Earl Grey. I love most Earl Greys because I love Earl Grey. But um, yeah, so something nice and cozy. It's actually quite chilly here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I live in Berkeley, California. And I was in the city yesterday for um, a last concert, which I'll talk about later in backstage knitting but it was so cold. It was like, oh, summer has arrived in San Francisco. <laughs> it's usually when the fog rolls in and the winds pick up, so it's nice to have something warm and cold and snuggly today. I'm drinking out of my favorite mug, which is from Remembrances Pottery, lovely Natalie, who has an Etsy shop. So do check her out if you haven't already. So grab your beverage of choice and let's get started. Community Cork Board. So Community Cork Board is a place at the beginning of every episode where we can share news from our community, things that lovely makers have um, let us know about in the Ravelry group that I will highlight each week. And it's also an opportunity to welcome, first of all, welcome all returning viewers and welcome all new viewers. Thank you so much for checking out this vlog among the many nitty crafty vlogs out there. I hope you enjoy your time here visiting. And since this is the official first episode of the um, month of May, I will do an introductions shout out to all of those folks who introduce themselves in the introductions thread in the Ravelry group. So roll that epic Star Wars roll call. A huge welcome to Carlene Page, who is Carlene from Virginia. A.L., from who is Aya Lina from Finland. Chickadee Tree, who is Beverly from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Colorful, colorful Coder, who is Sally from Louisiana. Welcome, Sally. Bob Lynn, who is Linda from Sydney, Australia. KCB Frogger, who is Kimberly from the Bay Area, but now lives in Arkansas. The Zenka, Zencha, who is Ada from Croatia. Susan Knitter 2, who is Susan from New York. High Five Panda, who is Gail from New York. Kimberly 244, who is Kimberly from Pennsylvania. Maggie 13, who is Margaret from California. Audrey, who is Heidi from Finland. Marley Maid, who is Marley from Vancouver, British Columbia. Crafty Fibro Nitty, who is Brigitte from Belgium. Pink Hat Queen, who is Glenda from Seattle, Washington. 
This RM Knits, who is Emily from Missouri. Just a Middle, who is Laura from Chicago. Brenda Lou Scott, who is Brenda from South New Jersey. Four Knit Sakes, who is Allison from Texas. Steffi Lou, who is Stephanie from Wisconsin. Silver Luna 2112, who is Jessica from Connecticut. Bibitree, who is Brit from Norway. Magadut, who is Margaret, Marguerite from Norway. Apologies if I said your name incorrectly. Anna Adelwallerium, <laughs> who is Anna, I love that name, who is Anna from Melbourne, Australia. Cody Knits, who is Cody from Atlanta, who has a wonderful podcast. Hello, Cody. Nitty Cat 2 from Illinois. Harp Wiz 38, who is Maddie K from the US of A. Pepper Ann 2010, if you will, who is Pepper from Florida. And Marie Celeste Knits, who is a Villamine from the Netherlands. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. If you would like to introduce yourself and tell us about how you came to knitting and the fiber arts, we'd love to hear from you in the introductions thread. And if you do so, I will give you a shout out in the first episode of each month. Um, I love reading every single one of your stories and your kind notes. So do know that if you see a little love button, it's for me. I do read them all. So do check them out too if you haven't because they're just a joy to read so welcome everybody there is a community cork board thread in the Ravelry group where lovely makers can include discounts for all of us and highlights about their shops new designs that have come out and each week anything new that's popped up in there I will highlight here on the episode so we had a few this week which is really exciting so Shelby, who is Yes That Shelby on Ravelry, has released a brand new hat pattern. Congratulations, Shelby. It is called Avenue of Pines. The design is inspired by where she grew up and she shares in the Ravelry pattern on the description um, how she came about to the design and the story of um, her inspiration for designing it. Uh, this design for you guys is half off until May 14th. There isn't a coupon code, so if you go in to purchase it, it's automatically half off, which is awesome. Thank you so much, Shelby. So this can be purchased on Ravelry. Um, all of the details will be in the show notes with a link, so do check those out. And it's a lovely hat pattern, so congratulations again, Shelby. Um, Villamine who I incorrectly called Marie last episode and maybe before that too. <laughs> so Villamine is the wonderful maker behind Marie Celeste Stitches, who I have jabbered on about many times on this podcast because I adore her work. She makes gorgeous project bags, um, just inspire a lot of them inspired by Beatrix Potter. I'll have some here to show you in a bit because we're going to draw winners for the Beatrix Potter Cal later on in the episode, but she has generously included a coupon code for all of you. The details are in the thread, but it's um, the code is OPERATEJOE15, which I will put up here, and it's for 15% off um, items in her beautiful Etsy shop, so do check that out. Thank you so much, Vilami. And then Lee of Wooly Bags um, on Etsy, she is offering 50% off of items in her Etsy shop right now until May 15th. And this is using the code CLOSING50, which I will put here. And she is doing an inventory reduction sale. So do check that out. She has um, generously donated something donated something from her shop for a future giveaway which will be in the giveaway price pool so keep an eye out for this in the future but it's a lovely dpn holder isn't that so cute so this is to woo flying so this is to hold your dpns your double pointed needles um if you're making a sleeve or some socks there's her lovely label so she has some lovely items, so half off, what a deal, go check out her shop. 
And then last but not least, lovely Lauren of Designs by L. Kidaish. I'm sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly, but here is the name down here. And she has a lovely Etsy shop and she is offering 15% off for all of you using the code HIGHNOTES15. I love doing that. It's so much fun. <laughs> and she in her shop has some gorgeous sock flakes. So do check that out as well. So thank you all so much for these wonderful discounts and highlights about designs that are coming out. Um, there are many more discounts that are still going on, so I encourage you to check out the discount community corkboard thread. Finished objects, none this week, but I have some works in progress, so I'm going to grab those to show all of you. This past week, I was really busy with a concert series, um, and so I kind of hinted last week, if you saw the episode, that I wasn't going to have a ton of knitting done on my various whips, but... Um, I actually did quite a, made a big dent in my tale as old as time cowl, which is by Anne Valley of Little Skein in the Big Wool. And this I picked up at Stitches West back in February. I bought kind of a kit, I made my own little kit together and I got this gorgeous bag. So this is inspired by Beauty and the Beast. Gorgeous, gorgeous bag. And it's got lovely lining. Oh, love it. And this is yarn by Mustache Mustache Yarns, which I often call Mustache Sheep Yarns, and I realized the other day why that is, and that's because that's the Instagram handle, so hello. So <laughs> this is the Bell Colorway. This is a tubular cowl. Oh, I love it. I just adore these colors. They're so utterly vibrant and just bring a total smile to my face and everybody's face who sees that sees it when I'm knitting on it um, so last time I had showed you last week I was where this progress keeper is which is a little teacup a la chip from um, a homespun house and I knit all of this this past week so this was my in rehearsal in between sets kind of knitting I just needed something really easy um, kind of mindless, something I could grab and put down really easily. It was fantastic. So I'm glad I made a little dent in here. I'm going to go until about 30 ish inches. Um, and I've got this much left of the skein. Um, so I'm hoping I have, I know I'll have enough to finish this. Um, but I'm hoping I have enough to, um, to have a little bit for, like a little scrap for like a cozy memory blanket. Should I ever cast that on? <laughs> um, I've toyed with doing a scrap blanket using, pardon me, using Mina of um, of the Knitting Expats pinwheel um, pattern um, and kind of making like a modern quilt. So that was a sidetrack, but basically I'm hoping I have a little bit of a scrap left over. So. That's what I've got. And then I'm really hoping to get to the next colorway soon, which is the Beast colorway. So I have a new set of colors to look forward to as I knit along, so it's great. So this is kind of the main thing that I worked on. This is fingering weight yarn. And I'm using, let's see what size needles I'm using because I haven't mentioned that in a while. I'm using think size three. I'll put it down here. So, um, but I'm using Addy Turbos, which I really like um, because they don't have too sharp of a point. Um, I do want to try higher, higher sharps at some point, but I do kind of like these because of the way I knit. I kind of, um, let me see if I can show you. I don't know if I've ever showed like how I knit on the podcast besides like little B-roll footage and stuff. <laughs> So this is in Magic Loop, and you can see my index finger, I kind of push it down a little bit right there. So I can only imagine with high, high sharps, I would be like jabbing my finger all the time. And I do that because I often don't look at my knitting, and so it's so that I can kind of feel where I am and everything. I don't push very hard, I kind of just um, guide it down. 
but I'm getting faster. I'm really hoping that I can um, do a little bit more of a flicking motion. I kind of do kind of a quasi flick, <laughs> if you will, quasi throw and flick. So um, I just, I think to do that, I need to get like hold a little bit closer to the needle to do that, but I like um, holding it down here a little bit. So anyway, I now don't want to put this down, but I will so we can move forward to the next whip that I worked on. The next work in progress that I worked a little bit on this week was doing a swatch for my Gilead pullover, which is by Layla Robb. And this is um, made out of Quince & Co. Sparrow yarn, which is a linen base. It's 100% organic linen. And it's in the Eclipsed colorway. It's this gorgeous kind of gray, super, super dark gray. I, I'm hesitant to call it black because it does really look like gray. So, um... This is gorgeous. It's made in Italy, quinsonco.com. All of the details will be in the show notes. And I cast on my little swatch here. Ta-da! So I decided to do a little bit more than what it asks for, which is um, um, 23 stitches for four inches. Like every four inches needs to have 23 stitches tomato tomato so I did a little bit more just so I could really see the potential drape of the fabric that I'm making and really kind of get a um, feel of how it softens up which it does I didn't super aggressively block this so I can only imagine it's gonna get even softer especially if I put it in the dryer which some folks have recommended that I do or if I just manhandle it like this so um, I did my gauge and I used this handy dandy thing from Ann Bud Knits where I don't know if you can see you basically line up your stitches to one of these and it tells you how many stitches per inch that you have going and right now I've got I totally have that upside down <laughs> there you go um, so right now I've got five stitches per inch which means I've got 20 stitches per four inches. So I'm a little bit under, but I think I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna keep the needle size, which I used was a size five needle. And I used my Carbons interchangeables, um, which I think I'm gonna stick with. I was wondering if I needed to move to wood because it might be too slippery. We'll see. I think this is a good in-between because it has the metal tip. Um, but that kind of grips a little bit um, down here. I was thinking of something a little dirty term, but you, you know what I mean. <laughs> so anyway, so I think I'm going to keep these and keep my keep this fabric because I don't want it to be any bigger. I do think it'll even stretch out more and soften up and grow as I wear it. I like the fabric that's being created. I'm trying to make peace with the fact it's not going to be totally even. <laughs> so, and maybe the stitches will be more even as I get used to handling it. It's pretty, it's not too bad, eh? For the first time knitting with, knitting with the, with linen. So I caked it up. I went ahead and caked it up on my ball winder, but I know already, and somebody had warned me about this to, um, it, really should be hand wound because you could see when I took it off it was like just like it's like a to you might need to put like a toilet paper roll or something in there <laughs> so um it's gonna collapse is what I'm trying to say so we'll see we'll see how this one goes it's my test knit because it's all obviously easier to cake it up on a ball winder than to like sit there and hand wind it but it would be kind of nice to have like some hand wound balls for my project um so i am gonna alternate skeins even though i don't want to um just because you never know it does look quite similar but i just don't want to play with fire so i have i think i bought 10 of these skeins these are each 50 grams each i did do my measurements i'm gonna do seven inches positive ease um 
uh, more than my bust. And I did cross check it with the tip that lovely Tina had told me was to find a similar pullover if I had one in my wardrobe, which I do, and measure it underarm to underarm. Um, and then get the circumference from that measurement and that's what I should aim for and it actually matched up with my bust plus seven inches positive ease so I'm actually really happy with that and then if it turns out to be a little bit smaller because this seems to be my swatch seems to be a little bit tighter I think I will be okay because I do know that it'll grow um, I hope this isn't famous last words but you know, it's always like, also, I want to lose weight. Like, if I lose 10 pounds, you know, it'll fit even better, which I do. But um, I don't want to make something for a future weight that just doesn't make sense. So I am excited. I'm going to probably cast on tomorrow because I want to work on a few other things today as well as editing this lovely episode and really get going on it. I think it's knit in the round. I need to look at the pattern again, um, which will be great. Hold on. I'm going to turn off, put my phone on airplane mode because it keeps popping up with messages. Hold on. Okay. Hopefully that hasn't moved too much. Um, my phone is like blowing up with messages because my sister and brother-in-law just moved into a new home. So I'm getting all the updates and cute little photos of my nephew. So I'm like totally distracted. So I had to put it on airplane mode. Anyway, so I love the drape of this. I'm super excited to cast this on. I do believe that I knit in the round, which will hopefully make this fly and go really fast. We shall see in the instructions. Um, but I, yeah, I'm really excited to cast this on. It's probably going to be tomorrow. And this is for the Summer Garment Cow. Yay! Which began May 1st and was inspired by lovely Natalie of Remembrances Pottery when she heard me talking about casting on this pullover and how I really want to have a wardrobe of summer garments, summer woolen or linen garments or cotton, what 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 have you. So um, she inspired us to do this cal and so many of you are taking part and are excited about it. It goes until the end of August so there's plenty of time. Whips are included so if you have any summer cardigans or summer t-shirts that have been on the needles and get put away once fall hits, what have you, totally pick it up. Just as long as you're not like literally binding off the last row, but you know, whatever. I'm not gonna like be super hardcore about it, but. So it's a fun like knit along. It's not necessarily to knit things made out of linen. Um, it's whatever is summer in your climate. So if it's still quite cool and you make like a light cardigan, that's totally cool. It is a garment, so not accessories, no, no shawls, what have you. But it can be a cardigan, a pullover, or as I like to say, crocheted, crocheted pair of shorts. Because you know there's probably a pattern out there. And we have... I've kind of talked about it a little bit, but we received the grand prize for the cow from Natalie herself of Remembrances Pottery. And she designed this and got my input on it. And it's been so much fun to see her sending progress pictures and videos of her making it. Um, and it's just, it's so summery and lovely. So here it is. This is going to be a grand prize. Isn't it beautiful? It's so summery. It has like little balls of yarn as the flowers and this cute little butterfly. And then get ready for it. Are you ready? <laughs> it has the hashtag for the summer garment cow. So you can always remember your journey of making your summer wardrobe. I thank you so much, Natalie. This is absolutely gorgeous. So your prize, the grand prize, is wrapped up and it looks like this and it's totally secure and ready to go to the winner later on in September when we pull for the winners. But this is my mug to remember 
this cowl and this journey of making a linen pullover. So thank you so much, Natalie, and thank you so much for the nudge and the idea of doing this cowl. I'm so excited to be working on all of this fun stuff and to see what you guys are all making. There's a chatter thread in the Ravelry group with projects that people have cast on or are sharing that they're going to be picking up again. It's just so wonderful and so inspiring. So do check it out. But thank you so much, Natalie. Those were my knitting whips for this past week, but I did want to highlight the Outlander Cal, which I'm co-hosting with the lovely Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick podcast. And this wonderful knit along goes until the end of June. It was extended not too long ago. Um, it was due to end at the end of April, I believe, but we decided to keep it going because we're having too much fun and we're all still working on our projects and casting on more. So it's still going on. There are so many lovely prizes for finished objects and there have been a ton of new finished objects in the finished objects thread, which is in the Knitting Broomstick Ravelry group. So do check that out. It's gorgeous. And yeah. So if you love Outlander, which is not kid friendly, I do want to add that in there. I need to be better about prefacing with that, but it is a wonderful book series and show on Stars Network that is historical fiction and um, romance and what have you. It's, it's wonderful. So, uh, yeah. So that is a wonderful cow that is going on as well. Cross Stitch Corner. I have gotten the cross stitch, cross stitch bug again, you guys, big time. It's like all I think about. <laughs> I mean, it's not because I think about knitting all the time too, but I am so happy with cross stitching again. It's so satisfying and I feel like it's exciting because I'm learning new things and um, trying out new things. I think I kind of had in my mind like set in my ways like I knew what to do but there are so many I'm learning that there are different techniques and ways of doing it which I would love to explore and have started to explore so it's really reinvigorated this particular craft for me and it's totally exciting so I'm working on the forest pattern which is by Satsuma Street which has a lovely Etsy shop and I'm gonna be making this into a pillow believe and this is a picture of where I was at last week and here it ha is what I did this past week so I basically finished out this tree bit here and now I just have to fill in this little these little bits here with various colors so I've got kind of a good system going down. It's pretty amazing that I even did this in the midst of my busy schedule. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. Give a little pet on book. So um, this is a needle minder from A Needle Runs Through It. A TARDIS, of course. And I took some video here of, um, hopefully it's not too janky <laughs> looking, but I tried a couple of different ways of starting my embroidery thread for a new line um, and thank you all again for your input and tips and um, ideas of how to do it and I did find a wonderful tutorial which I did find and I will link in the show notes here um, which basically did what you guys were describing I believe um, and so the first way that I had been trying it is that I would um, put two strands of the embroidery floss together I put it through the needle and then I would um, go through the back of the work and then do that first half stitch and then turn to the back of the work again and not pull the thread all the way through because there is no knot and I would leave a little tail on the back and kind of put that to the right of me and then I would take my needle and go into the hole that is for um, as if I was going to continue doing half stitches. And then as I pull that needle through through the front of the work, I make sure that that thread goes over that little tail securing it down. 
hopefully that video just explained what I just said out loud. So um, that was the first way I was doing it, which was great, but you do have like a little bit of a tail. And, you know, I was like, okay. Um, and then I, you all had like told me about this. I'd seen it on this video and the video even, the lady said that this was her preferred way. Candace wrote and said that this is how she does it as well, which is to take a single thread, double the length wise of what you usually would cut off of the embroidery floss and then um, fold it basically in half with the two ends together making two threads but the bottom is connected so it's got a little loop so you basically got it kind of folded in half and then you put those two ends together through the needle and then you put the needle in through the back to the front um, and then go through that top half stitch to the back and then you turn your work back around to the back and then as you bring the needle through I'm trying to think you don't go all the way through of course because you don't have a knot and then when you go back um, when you put your needle into the next hole to go into the next half stitch to begin that you make sure that you pull you put the needle through that little loop securing it in I don't think I explained that very well, but I know that the video is very clear, so I will make sure that you can see that very clearly. <laughs> it's very hard to explain and very hard to type up, which a lot of people said. So it has to be a very visual thing. So um, that is my preferred way of doing it. It is a little finicky to get a single piece of embroidery floss that long off of the kind of hank or skein, if you will. Um, without it tangling up so I kind of have to get that jive down after so many years of doing it a different way um, but I do prefer that it is gonna be a little I'm not really gonna be able to do that I'm gonna have to do that first method with some of the colors that I crazily cut in too short of lengths when I was doing the project card but now I have two different ways and I actually utilized that first way just a couple like an hour ago when I was um, finished with this side but had to finish this bit here but I'd already started a piece of thread and so I didn't want to like start a new one folding it in half so I did that first technique and I could keep it going so it's great that's great and it saves to me it feels like it saves a lot of time and kind of just keeps the work flowing without having to stop and make that knot so I look forward to continuing to work on this. I might work on it later today after I edit because I really want to finish this tree. I tell you, it's like, an, I'm like, just one more row, just one more row. It feels like when I started knitting and I just was like, I gotta keep going. So, <laughs> so that is Cross Stitch Corner. So alicious. It's the return of so alicious, guys. I don't, I think it's because of cross stitching, maybe the weather change. I have gotten the sewing bug again. I'm so excited. So I've taken my beautiful sewing machine out from underneath its cover and I'm doing this to inspire me to work on it. So I usually bring this machine over to where I'm sitting here, which is my little desk and um, plop it on here and I have the window and it's really lovely. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be making the Sorbetto Top by Colette, which is a free pattern. I learned about it from Jacqueline of Brooklyn Knit Folk, who is, I believe, making it as well. And here it is. I probably showed it on the screen too, but here's my printout instructions. And since it's a free pattern, I'll show you just that first bit. So I'm doing the PDF, so I have to... Um, paste it all together or tape it rather there you go and I'm gonna be doing the size I think 18 so I can have it be a little bit roomier for the bust and I'm gonna do a muslin of it first because it's been a while since I've done darts 
and I want to make sure that they are fitting correctly because I have pretty, I have a long torso, but I have a shorter um, distance from my top of my shoulders to my bust. And a lot of times with store-bought clothes or even the costumes that I've made, I've always ended up having to take up um, right around the shoulder area. So I want to do a muslin first before I cut into this gorgeous fabric, which I will go get so I can show you. I went to a local fabric store, which I adore, which is called Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics here in Berkeley, California. And I went on a lunch hour with my good friend Destiny, who is also my coworker. And she is gonna make a Colette pattern as well, which is a lovely t-shirt um, that I need to look up because I might make it out of one of these fabrics instead of two sorbetto tops. But we shall see, I'll share those details next week when I kind of decide. Um, but I, so this pattern recommends that you get um, a cotton, let me, let me just find it so I can tell you the correct info. It recommends that you get a lightweight to medium weight fabric such as cotton voile, lawn, silk, rayon chalice, or polyester. And so I looked at some of the cotton and the lawn fabrics and they were just too thin. Um, they also just would wrinkle and I knew that would really bug me. So I decided to look at the rayons to see how slippery they are because I'm a little nervous about it. I, ha I haven't knit or knit, I haven't sewed too much with um, lighter fabrics outside of cotton. Um, I've done linen and I've done lining before, but again, it's been some time since I've done that. So, and that's another reason for the muslin too, is to get used to the feeling of the feed dogs and um, get my tension and my um, sight lines going again as well. So I picked up this first one is, you know I love me some cotton and steel and I love me some rifle paper company. So best of both worlds. <laughs> so this is um, cotton and steel's partnership with rifle paper company. It's a rayon chalice, I believe. Let me find the, um, what you call that? Um, salvage so you can see it. It's just part of their Le Fleur collection. It's made in Japan. It's part of their spring 2016 line. You can kind of see the salvage there. Anyway, so um, that is the first fabric. I'm going to um, wash this first and I was um, t reminded to do that also by the lovely shop keeper if you will um, when she was cutting my fabric because she was like it does shrink um, and they do talk about that on Colette as well there's a lovely blog entry um, from Colette about um, sewing with this particular fabric even in this pattern it's it's kind of amazing that it's there so I've been pouring over that I'll make sure to include that in the show notes as well um, in case you were interested so I am super excited. It's just got this wonderful hand and like flow to it. I don't know if you can see that. And it kind of feels cottony, but it's it's obviously not. Um, it's, yeah, it doesn't feel cheap. It feels really well, um, well made. Yeah, I'm a little worried about it getting like faded with washing it, so I'm gonna have to really, I might do it up at my mom's place because she has a really nice washing machine um, so I can make sure that the colors are okay. Um, and like dry it on like really light, cool heat, if even any heat at all. So that's the first fabric. And then the second fabric I am in love with, and this is also a rayon fabric but it looks like linen can you see that I'm, I'm gonna put a picture up here so you can see it up close too because it's hard to see kind of the detail you can a little bit there and it's this lovely like coral color it's also got a beautiful hand to it as well I don't think there's a selvage with details it just has like the selvage kind of line right there but it's gorgeous and it's funny because it's like they look really well together <laughs> so um 
yeah, I'm really excited. I definitely want to make a sorbetto top out of this one because I think this would be a great like staple piece to have um, out of like a plain color. Um, um, and then I think for this one I'm going to do a sorbetto top, but there's that other t-shirt um, pattern that my friend's making that I, I think will look really cute in this. Um, so I have to decide about that. But first a muslin. I think I have some muslin fabric in the hoarder's closet back there. <laughs> but um, I have to take a look. Otherwise I might just go to Joann's and pick some up. Um, I want to do it this week. I would say I would wait to go up to mom's and dive through her epic fabric stash. But I really want to cut this out and get started on it this week since I now have my nights at home again and yeah and I really I want to get into it's similar to cross stitch what really proved to me is that as long as I set up my systems and my way of organizing I can just fly and feel really creative and and um, be productive on projects and I haven't really fully set that up down here yet because I will, I'm gonna have to cut on my floor. I probably need to get like a really big mat. Um, eventually down the line, I'd like to get like a foldable craft table, which is not in the cards right now. But um, yeah, I think once I kind of get into my groove, I think I'll be a-okay. So that's so delicious. And I'm determined to have something to show you next week because I don't want to just talk about sewing. I'm like, I'm going to do it. It's just like cross-stitching. Even if I just do a little bit each day, I know I'll catch the bug and I'll be more productive and, and feel um, invigorated by it. So, yeah. From the Posty. So we um, received a couple of lovely, generous giveaway prizes for future giveaways in the Post this week. And um, as well as some lovely gifts from the makers as well for me, which was so lovely. So the first one was from a shop that I highlighted a couple of weeks ago. They have a discount, I think that's still going on, it might have ended, um, which is with the Share My Passion Etsy shop. And they, um, Ilza and Georgi, they make beautiful, OMG, wait till you see this, resin stitch markers. And they live in Latvia. And they're a married couple and they have this Etsy shop together. And they wrote to me and said um, that they would like to send something for a future giveaway and also a lovely gift for me, which is so generous. Thank you so much. So without further ado, here is the future giveaway from one of you all and it comes with lovely teas and their card which you can see here gorgeous share my passion handmade jewelry share my passion .eu, and also on Etsy and here it has like a little sweet candy which is like Latvian candy which Bulgaria I can't wait to try this and I mean this is for you but I got one too <laughs> and then oh my gosh this is amazing so there's three stitch markers gorgeous you see and it's got little dried flowers inside so it's got like little like little roses and this looks like like a dandelion or something and then there's this lapel pin on the top here with also a lovely stitch resin flower inside. Oh, it's gorgeous. And you just kind of, I think, turn that off. But yeah. So this is a future giveaway for one of you. It's so gorgeous. So I received a little packet of beautifulness as well, which I'll pop up a picture here so you can see a better look at their gorgeous work. And also included in it was a special little stitch marker because I've gone on and on in the past about my obsession, my horrible, lovely obsession with gummy bears, <laughs> namely Haribo gummy bears. And so they made me can't even with this it's like <laughs> I'm so excited 
He made me a gummy bear stitch marker. <laughs> Amazing. I have to sing about it. I love you, gummy bear stitch marker. <laughs> Amazing. So thank you, Ilza and Georgi, so much for your beautiful gift and for sharing this with the viewers as well. And mwah. forgot to share it. They sent this beautiful postcard with the package as well. I love getting postcards. Oh, what a treat. And from all over the world. So great. So this is um, Must See Bulgaria. It's an old windmill in Sozopol, I believe. Such a cool photograph. And um, they also wanted to remind us of a coupon code, which is for 15% off, which is using Opera 15, which you can see right here. So thank you so much again, guys. There are some lovely questions in the Ask Away thread in the Ravelry group, and I'm gonna answer one of them and answer um, the next ones in the next coming weeks. So we can spread the love. So the first question is from Casey, and she is Fiber Diva 28 on Ravelry. And she asked, hi Joanna, I was wondering if you had to choose only one favorite musical, which one would it be and why? I love several musicals, but my absolute favorite is Les Miserables. I love the music and the story so much, and my husband laughs at me because I'm always singing the songs in the shower. Sing away, girlfriend, sing away. Also, if you could learn to play an instrument, which one would you choose? Thank you so much for asking, Casey. So my favorite musical is Into the Woods, which is by Stephen Sondheim, and I adore it. I adore it. And the reasons why, let me think. Hmm. I love this musical because of the story. I love the wit. I love the interweaving of various stories that we all know and how they all come together. I love that it's real, like people, spoiler alert, people die in it. <laughs> and I love that, um, I just, I love the sense of humor. It's the first musical that I had seen um, that had that sense of humor as me, which is, um, I don't know how to explain it. The, how I explain it is if you've seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it's basically that sense of humor. <laughs> it's optimistic, but realistic, um, and very quick-witted, and, um, with a long view perspective, but also kind of zeroing in on um, very sp specific details. It sounds very vague, but maybe some of y'all will get that. But I um, love the story, and those are the reasons I love the story. I adore the music, and the music in the lyrics and the it's basically an operata. It, Stephen Sondheim is probably my favorite musical writer, if you will, composer. There you go. There's the name. Um, because it's so, it's something before I fully studied music in college and whatnot and really understood the um, kind of back end and how um, the framework of music composition worked. It's something that I enjoyed, and then once I did kind of know that, um, I I appreciated it even more because I knew that he was pulling from a vast um, historical knowledge of how music is structured, how it's been structured in the past, and then trying to make his own stamp upon that structure. So I just... Ad absolutely adore that musical. I also was lucky enough to be in it in high school. <laughs> it was my first proper musical. I played Cinderella. Um, and I just, I, it's one of my favorite memories. And it's really when I kind of caught the bug and was like, oh yeah, maybe I could, maybe I could do this thing. 
So um, that is my favorite musical. And I, um, if I could play an instrument, what would it be? So I actually didn't start out as a singer. I started out as a cellist, a cello player. And I stopped playing in college. Um, I stopped properly playing in junior high. Um, but I played, I want to say for about six years. I was pretty young. Um, and then I kept going. And then we moved um, right around the time that I went into junior high. And I stopped after that. And I, I did it for a few years. Um, and then like right before high school, I stopped it. And it was mainly because I was getting to a point where I knew that I was going to be going to cello lessons and um, recitals and all kinds of stuff after school. And I think having moved, um, I didn't want to do that and not be able to meet new people and feel like I felt like I was going to be cut off from social settings if I continued doing that. I sometimes wonder if I hadn't moved around that time if I would have continued, but I'm not sure. Um, oh, adolescence. But I do miss it. I picked it up very briefly in college um, when I just started like properly taking lessons and whatnot and um, thought maybe I'll go back to cello because I did love it and um, I did really enjoy it. The thing is, is that I learned Suzuki method and the way that I was taught, I didn't really fully learn how to read music, meaning when I looked at the page, I didn't see A, B flat, C, C sharp, whatever. I saw finger positions for the cello. Um, and I really learned by ear. I mean, it, it was very useful because I do have a very quick ear. Um, and I can do that instant tuning and whatnot. It really helps with my work in especially choruses. Um, but yeah, it wasn't something like, I basically was kind of gonna have to learn how to do some really basic things. And I was at a point where I was like, I'm ready to be a master at something, <laughs> get a degree. So I went back to singing and I did fall in love with singing. So, um, yeah, so sometimes I kind of want to go back to it. I miss it every once in a while, like even last night in the concert, um, just watching all of the celli play. It was just like, oh, I remember doing that. It was so good. Um, so, yeah, I think if it was another instrument outside of that, I think I would love to have the lung capacity to play the oboe <laughs> or the clarinet. Um, but I just, I don't know. I've tried it sometimes. It just, it it don't happen. I played flute a lot in high school and marching band and whatnot, but um, I've just always admired. I have two really good friends who are professional clarinetists in Tulsa, and they just I like bow down to their awesomeness. So anyway, thank you so much for asking, and I will answer the next couple of questions in the thread in the next coming weeks. And if you have a question, please do plop it in there. It doesn't have to be knitting related, as you will see. It could be about music. Um, you know, I, I'm happy to talk about it. So ask away. Beatrix Potter Cal winners. Yay. So just quickly going to announce the wonderful winners of the Beatrix Potter Cal finished objects thread. Thank you all so much for taking part in this fun cal. And it was so wonderful to chat with you all about Beatrix Potter and the lovely stories that she wrote and her aesthetic and just something definitely to do every year. So I hope you all had fun. I hope that we can do it again next year to commemorate the beginning of spring as well and to continue reading Beatrix Potter and making lovely things inspired by her stories and her beautiful aesthetic as well. There were 38 entries, including my first post, in the finished objects thread. So I'm gonna randomly select some winners here for these various prizes. So the first prize is this stunning bag from Marie Celeste Stitches, Villamine of Marie Celeste Stitches on Etsy. And I'm gonna use a random number generator, my little Siri here, and let's pick the winner. Pick a number between one and 38. Thirty-four. Mm. <gasps> Yay! It's a 
cross stitch one. So this is, this was a make along. It was called a cow and I'm going to be better about the titles, but, um, this was a make along. So other items were also eligible to be entered into this cow. So this is from Anna at Woolarium and she made an Andy Warhol inspired cross stitch Peter Rabbit portrait. It's amazing. I have it up here on the screen. So congratulations, Anna. Um, reach out to me with your details either on Ravelry or Instagram direct message, whichever you prefer. You can always email, any of you can always email me also at operajoe at stitchingthehighnotes.com as well. So just um, let me know your address information and I will get this off into the mail to you. The next prize is from Diane of Elm Tree Yarns. It's this gorgeous, one of a kind set of yarn, specially dyed for this make along, which is called Tittle Mouse Tea Party. Um, and it is a one of a kind. And it's got this companion color, this beautiful lavender color for like heels, cuffs, and toes. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. So thank you so much, Diane. And it also comes with this little packet of teas, a lovely business card, and some Skittles. So let's draw for the winner for this one. 29. Oh, yay, I love these too. I love all of these. So this is, um, the winner is Mums Maid or Mums Mad, who is Helen from the United Kingdom. And she made Mr. McGregor's Carrot Socks is what she's called it. And it's the Murita pattern um, by Anna Freiburg. And it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to make these socks myself. I talked about them a few episodes ago and they're in my queue. Oh, they're so stunning. So congratulations. Yay. Send me your info and I'll pop this beautiful yarn in the mail to you. The next prize is also from Diane of Elm Tree Yarns and she made this super special project bag. Oh, super sweet and special. It's got this little tab. I think that's stamped on there. It's gorgeous. And it's got little Peter Rabbit fabric of him running around and this cute little bunting. Oh, it's stunning. And it's got a little zipper pull and a lovely handle as well. And it also comes with some goodies as well, some tea and some gummies. And let's choose the winner for this price. 25. Ooh. So the winner is Carlene Page. Congratulations, Carlene. So Carlene is from, um, I'm not sure where she's from, mysterious Carlene. So Carlene made this beautiful water lily pouchlet. And she used the same yarn, um, I think that she'd used for another pattern or another project. Oh, the one that she had entered before up above, which was a lovely, beautiful shawl. And so she made this really cool pouchlet. Um, she crocheted it and um, yeah, it's just, it's fantastic. I love all of the colors in it. It's super cute. So congratulations, Carlene. Send me your info and I will pop this in the mail to you. The next prize was donated by the lovely Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick podcast. And she has this, I believe it's a freckled whimsy bag from her prize stash, if you will. And it has some gorgeous bunny rabbit fabric on it. I have it pictured up here. And this will be going to 10. This is going to Bird Song Knits on Ravelry. Yay! And Elaine is from Westmont here in the U.S. And she made these beautiful Jemima Puddle Duck socks. And she says they're such a beautiful and soothing colorway to knit on. And I couldn't agree more. So congratulations. Let me know um, that you got notified of this and then I'll either um, put you in touch with Jilly so she can send you the bag 
don't think she sent it to me. I'll double check, but go ahead and send me your address information and we'll get that prize sent off to you. And the last prize for the Beatrix Potter Cal or make along was um, generously donated from Catherine of Crafternoon Treats. And she offered to custom dye two skeins of yarn using the winner's own inspiration. Super special. She has a lovely Etsy shop, so do check it out. And you can use either a photograph or a theme um, for the inspiration. And then this colorway will become available in her shop as well um, as a limited edition. So super special. So thank you so much, Catherine, for this generous prize. And without further ado, the winner is 22. The winner is Quiet Zone. Yay! So Quiet Zone on Ravelry is lovely Teresa from Huntsville, Alabama. And she wrote that the tan colorway of this simpatico wrap is Dormouse. Beatrix had a favorite pet Dormouse, Zarfia. She named one of her characters in the fairy caravan after her pet, and she included mice in several books. And with the picture of her lovely finished object, which you should see up here on the screen. She has a picture of Beatrix Potter's illustration of J. Dormouse. So, oh, it's so gorgeous. So, oh, so get in contact with me and let me know that you saw this and then I'll put you in contact with Catherine. We can get that custom dyed yarn happening. I can't wait to see it. So congratulations everybody. It again was such a pleasure to take part in this make along with you all and I look forward to it next year. A reminder that there is a giveaway going on to celebrate the first potiversary of this podcast and it is a um, special package that I put together of some of my favorite things for one of you. Um, it, the giveaway is still going on. Um, I will announce the winner next episode. So that'll be episode 34. And it's for a Fringe Supply Company field bag, a skein of uh, yarn from A Verb for Keeping Warm, a box of stitch markers from Coco Knits, and then a digital pattern of the star shower cowl. And I'm super excited about this. There's been so many people entering and saying some lovely, wonderful things. So thank you so much for your love and your congratulations. And I'm just very, very touched by it all. So thank you. Sending you all a hug. I'm hugging you. Hug. <laughs> So there are three ways you can enter this giveaway and you can do all three. And the first is to enter on Ravelry. Um, actually, let me do it in order of how I did the instructions. So the first is to comment down in the episode 32 um, comments. So the last episode, not this one. I mean, you're welcome to comment, but um, to enter, enter into the episode 32 comment section and in your comment include hashtag Opera Joe Potiversary giveaway just so I can see who really wants to truly enter into the giveaway and then the next one is to go on to Ravelry and go to the giveaway thread and to um, answer name one lovely thing that has happened to you today and I took this from lovely Jacqueline of Brooklyn Knit Folk because she, I think, asks this question with all of her giveaways and I just love it. And it has been so lovely to read everything that you guys are writing. If you are feeling down or not as positive as you'd like to be feeling or just need a little shot in the arm of smiles, go read this thread because it is just so heartwarming and wonderful. So I love it. So that's one way to enter. And then, and no chatter in that thread, please, because I will random number generator pick somebody from that place. And then the last way to enter is on Instagram. And this is to find the post for the giveaway and to comment one comment per person, please. <laughs> 
and to at least tag one friend of yours in the comment section. And it's been lovely to read all of your comments on there as well, so thank you so much. So, um, yeah, and next week what I'm gonna do, I'll show you guys, cause I'm like legit gonna do this by the rules. So I'm gonna print out old school style, the comments on YouTube, and number each one that's eligible. And then I'm going to do random number generator for um, the Ravelry group. And then I will do print out the Instagram if I can. I think I can. Um, and number each one who's eligible for um, entry on there. So if you happen to have um, commented multiple times, because some folks have, I'll just do your first comment on there. So, um, yeah. And then I will choose a winner randomly from using random number generator from each of those channels, if you will. And then of those three folks, I will randomly select using random number generator, um, a winner for this grand prize first pot of giveaway. So, and I will announce who that is next week. So thank you so much and good luck. It's so much fun. It's the end of the show. The end of the episode. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Ooh. So backstage knitting. So backstage knitting is where I just chit chat briefly, sometimes not so briefly, but today it will be briefly about what's been going on the past week and what's coming up. So this past week I've, I kind of alluded to that I was really busy with a concert series at the symphony. I sing professionally with the San Francisco Symphony Chorus and we sang Berlioz's Requiem, which is not done very often because it's massive. Um, for our particular production, we had about 320 musicians. And it was very loud. Um, so I took a little bit of footage, I'll pepper it in here as I'm chatting away. Um, and yeah, it was, we had, um, we had, I think there were six brass quartet spread throughout the symphony hall, one of which was right behind me, so that was very loud. And there were 16 timpani. Usually there's just like four timpani set, like one set of timpani drums. Um, but there were 16 of them. It was very loud. And, um, yeah, the piece was really good. It, it isn't my favorite. It could be a little bit sluggish in places. Um, so I can kind of see why it's not done all of the time. Um, because it's no Verdi Requiem. Okay. Cause Verdi Requiem is amazing. <laughs> so, um, but it was enjoyable, it was fun put together and to work with some other courses that came and joined forces with us. Um, but I am so excited. I have the month off now from the symphony, so I have my evenings back um, to craft and to do things and do my dishes. <laughs> Maybe go on a date for once in my life. <laughs> Won't go there. But <laughs> I, um, I love my job at the symphony. I love all the singing that I do, but it was a very packed April. So I'm very excited to have a little bit of downtime at home and just have one job to work on. So, um, yeah, but uh, my job at Berkeley Rep is going well, and we've got a big musical that's going to be opening up. There's a musical version of Monsoon Wedding opening in not this coming week, but the week after. So we're gearing up for that. Um, and what else is going on? I'm going to go up to my mom's house for Mother's Day weekend, and also for my sister, who's now a mother, which is still really weird to say but <laughs> in the best way. Um, but I'm gonna go up for Mother's Day to celebrate all the mamas and to play with my dear sweet nephew who is so adorable. His hair is getting a little bit longer so he's got little cherub curls and he's laughing more. He's like sitting up and he's just, he's a model baby. He's a model baby. I wish I could show you pictures, but I'm respecting the parents' wishes, but he's the light of our lives and he's just a cuddle bug. I'm gonna FaceTime with him later today, so I'm really excited for that. But yeah, I let me see if I wrote down anything else. I think that's it. I'm 
I, I'm really looking forward to cross stitching more and to sewing. I'm determined to get that muslin done. And um, I'm really excited about it actually. It's the first time where I feel like I'm not forcing sewing. Like I'm really doing it on my own terms and, and not doing it for a deadline. Because in the past I was making costumes for an event that was coming up like in two weeks and just it added to like this burnout feeling every time I sewed. So. I'm looking forward to finding my own pace and finding um, how to troubleshoot and not feel really super pressured by that because I have a timeline coming up. So yeah. So that's going to do it for this week. I hope you are all doing well. Oh, I will add here in case anybody asks, um, this is Star Wars attire for May the 4th. <laughs> Um, and I got this from thinkgeek.com, so I'll have a um, link in the show notes. But that is going to do it for this week. I hope you are doing well. I hope your project is going well, that you are um, being inspired by the beautiful spring, summer weather. I know some folks are still getting snow, so I hope it melts soon and goes away. Um, if you would like to subscribe to the channel and be alerted to when new episodes come up, hit the old subscribe button down below. And if you want to be alerted to it and get an email in your inbox or even a pop-up on your phone, there's a little bell down below. And if you click on it, it'll look like it's ringing. And that'll um, make sure to indicate um, and notify you when a new episode is up. So um, thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely week.